Hi there, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, and today we're going to take a look at Magic the Gathering's newest release, and that is Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. So we're going to crack a whole set booster box of this and see what we get. Now, of course, if you only play Dungeons & Dragons or you only play Magic the Gathering, this might interest you in the other one, or it might not. If you're like me and you're a fan of both, well, you probably think it's pretty cool. So let's take a look and see what's inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started opening the new set for Magic the Gathering called Dungeons & Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Now, if you haven't seen any of my openings before, what I normally do is up in this upper left-hand corner, you're going to actually see me opening the box and opening all the packs. And that's going to be happening while I go through and actually give you a breakdown right here of all the cards that I got in the set. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, I opened a set booster box, and let's take a look at all the tokens I got. I got 12 of these tokens. I'm just going to put them up over here out of the way. I've got four of these inserts, and sometimes they have these cool different mini games that you can kind of do, which is kind of neat. And I think I'm going to do another video one of these days on some of those little cool mini games that they have. Sometimes I don't think people give them a chance, really. So I think they're kind of cool. Well, that's for that's something for another video. Okay, and then I got all these basic lands here. Um, I got 30 basic lands, so probably about anywhere from five to seven of each. Then we got some of these dungeon cards, and this is a new mechanic. And as you go through the dungeon, you have to have other cards that get you into the dungeon and advance you through the dungeon every time you advance to a new area a new effect happens and there are a lot of cards that advance you into the dungeon i think it's pretty cool and it's definitely very interesting i don't know if it's going to be a big time mechanic that other people are going to use seems a little gimmicky but considering it's four dungeons and dragons i think this is a cool idea because it really gives you the flavor of dungeons and dragons and i mean I think it's great. Something something different. Really great for a casual play, for sure. Now next I've got a bunch of these art cards. I got 29 art cards. I got two of these cards that are signed. These gold signed cards right here. I think that's, that's pretty cool. And then we've got a couple of these old school retro art looking cards. And I think those are really neat. What a, what a bunch of really nice display pieces. And then of course, as usual, Oh, there's Magic Missile. There's some really neat stuff in here. Yeah, oh yeah, some cool stuff. Okay. Art cards, really neat. Probably about, you know, a quarter or so a piece. Oh, hey, look at this. I don't even think I noticed this. I just, what is that? Oh, that's cool. So on the back of this art card with the Trask, it's actually got his stats for 5th edition. Well, it's kind of, a, it's very limited because he can do a lot more stuff than that. But let me see. Oh, look. A hey, this is a pleasant surprise. I literally just found this going through these cards right now. Goblin. Well, that's kind of neat. Frost Giant. Well, so they've actually got the stats. Flame Skull. Zorn. Pretty cool. Blink Dog. All right. So, Displacer Beast. Okay. Now, that right there is pretty neat. It's a nice little touch to add to the set. Some of these cards I want to look at, I got these nine basic lands. And what I think is, what's cool is, of course, a couple non-basic lands, these are just regular. But uh, notice I got an Evolving Wilds regular and an Altered Art one where it looks like, and both of these look like a basic Dungeons & Dragons module from back in the day. And I think, man, what a nice touch. That is just too cool, I got to tell you. Um, and I can't help it, I'm one of those guys. I enjoy fan service, and this is definitely servicing me as a fan. I think that's super cool. And it's neat that I actually got Temple of the Dragon Queen and the Alt Art, Evolving Wilds, and the Alt Art. Pretty neat stuff. Okay, now let's get into our actual colors now. White, Commons and Commons. I got 38 of them. And then let's see, we got blue. I got 51 blue cards. Black, 62, commons and commons. Red, I end up getting 
47 red cards. Green, I got 55. And let's see here. Then I've got these multicolors. And in the multicolors, I got ended up with 21 different multicolors. And we'll talk about these in a second. There's a couple of cool things in here that you might like. And then colorless cards. So basically, I think they're all artifacts. I don't think there's any actual colorless creatures, but that's an artifact. So I got 16 colorless creatures. And this is this is all without the rares. Okay, what I think is really neat is first of all, all the cards in this set definitely got the theme of Dungeons and Dragons. There's a lot of stuff like Dungeon Map, Mimic, there's these cool old school style arts for them, 50 feet of rope, leather armor, and then you have these list cards like Cranial Plating where they brought some of this old stuff back just so you could see. Uh, oh wait, that might not even be, ooh, is that a list card? Yes. And then back here, uh, like Muscle Sliver, like well, that's a list card right there. And that's cool that they brought that back too. Now, some other neat things I thought was kind of neat is of course you had the cool alternate art. See here we have Bruner Battlehammer. And then here we have him again in a more traditional Magic the Gathering style. And also this Sylvan Shepherd, you can see has a D20 mechanic. Now, if you uh, haven't played Dungeons and Dragons and have only played Magic, you can't use a spin down to do this. Uh, inevitably, a lot of people will, but this is really intended to be used with a completely randomized D20. All right, and they're like a buck, buck and a half. So, so I've talked to a lot of people. Some people, they think it's kind of cool because it's the flavor of Dungeons and Dragons. Other people think it's kind of gimmicky and they don't like it. But then again, too, you have to remember that this is uh, set with a different kind of reason to it. You know, it's not necessarily advancing, I don't think, any particular Magic the Gathering storyline. Uh, you know, it's not trying to help out modern. It's just something cool they did with another property they have to kind of help appeal to maybe Magic players who play Dungeons & Dragons or Dungeons & Dragons players who might find an interest in Magic the Gathering now that they have this set out. Not a bad idea, I think, from a marketing standpoint. Okay, so we looked at that. So let's go ahead and put these up and let's take a look at our rares. Okay, so let's take a look at our rares. So first up, we have the dollar rares. And this time, we had 14 different dollar rares. So a pretty decent chunk of dollar rares, which with most sets, that's kind of usually what I expect. Now in the $2 pile, we have 14 more dollar rares. And look at that. some pretty cool stuff like Orcus. I think that's pretty cool. The Gelatinous Cube, pretty neat. Wizard Spellbook. Ooh, an Illithid Scholar, that's pretty neat. I just, again, just really cool theming with Dungeons Dragons in general. All right, so 14 $2 ones. And in the $3 apartment, we've got five different ones. And unfortunately, the Tarrasque is one of the ones that's only three bucks. And quite frankly, he's kind of awful. <laughs> and um, it's kind of a shame that he didn't get more love. Uh, there's a lot of things I think they really hit the nail on the head with, but the Trask, if you play D&D, everybody's kind of disappointed. Sure, he's a 10-10, that's great. He costs nine, no problem. He has haste and ward as long as, well, as, long as 10 colorless, or as long as, uh, and ward 10, as long as it, it was cast. Okay, so if you cast it from your hand, he's got haste and ward 10. But whenever he attacks, it fights target creature defending player controls. <laughs> okay. Um, we kind of expected it. I think everybody expected him to have like indestructible or protection from, I don't know, creatures or other stuff. I don't know. It just, it just seemed kind of lackluster. But overall, still, the Trask in a Magic the Gathering set, pretty cool, kind of fun. Uh, definitely some fan service right there. I just wish he was better for the game. All right, so let's keep looking here. Uh, I got one $5 one, which was Icing Death, the Frost Tyrant. That's pretty cool. And if you read any the uh, Salvatore books, you know that Icing Death is also the name of one of Dritz's swords. All right, number six, or I'm sorry, $6. We have 
one. We have Minsk, Beloved Ranger. I love this because you also get a 1-1 one, one hamster creature token with Trample and Haste. <laughs> and uh, he's got a cool ability where you can uh, make a target creature you control with base and power toughness XX, 4X, and becomes a giant in addition to its other types. Activate only as a sorcery. Pretty neat. I like it. Honestly, I'll probably slip in him in a deck. Super cool. I like it. Uh, next up, we got a couple of $7 rares. We got Zariel, Archduke of Avernus. And we've also got Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled 20 cards with total mana value 20 or more. That's pretty interesting. Ooh, if someone's playing a low, uh, a low mana cost deck, that could be get pretty out of control. All right, and now we have an $8 card, which is another version of Icing Death the Frost Tyrant. And it's got the extended art, looks really good. Here, let me get a closer, let me get a closer on the camera there so everybody can see it. It's pretty sweet. Okay, and actually, I need to adjust my cards just a little bit here so we can get a little more, a couple of the other cards in. There we go. All right. And next up, we have $10. We got Circle of Dreams Druid, which is actually a path you can choose for your Druid in Dungeons and Dragons. Then we have a couple $12 cards. One is Inferno of the Star Mounts, Legendary Creature Dragon. And then we've got Acerac the Arch Lich. Pretty cool, he's a 5-5. Five, five. And twelve dollar card, pretty solid card. Kind of a, I consider uh, ten to twenty dollars, kind of a mid range cost card. And um, that's where he's sitting at right now. He's definitely pretty cool. I can definitely see him being added to uh, some zombie decks out there. And then finally, last, we have at twenty five dollars, the Demi Lich, Skeleton Wizard, costs four straight up. He's a four three, and he costs. Let's see, a blue, oh, little problem with my camera there. He costs a blue less to cast for each instant and sorcery spell you've cast this turn. This can get out of control, I think. Whenever Demi-Lich attacks, exile up to one target instant and sorcery card from your graveyard, copy it, and you may cast the copy. Very nice. You can cast Demi-Lich from your graveyard by exiling four instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard, in addition to paying its other costs. Yeah, I totally dig that. Demi-Lich, that's pretty cool. I definitely like that. Some really interesting abilities. And I like it that uh, you've actually got some way to make the colored mana actually cheaper. Because usually things cost less. You, usually when things cost less, it comes off the colorless and not the colored. I think that's pretty cool. I really like that. That's a neat card. So I can see why those two are as expensive as they are. Now, overall, this set booster box would normally run you... $134.99, that's usually what it goes for at my shop when set booster boxes first come out. I pulled here a total of not counting commons and uncommons, because you know commons and uncommons sometimes can spike, you know, four or five dollars or a couple bucks here and there, so that can change this price. But only going off of rares, which I only go off of rares, I end up pulling $159 total value. Now, I'm not making bank, you know, I'm not you know, selling two cards and getting all my money back for the set. But then again, this feels more normal for a uh, set booster. For me, it feels kind of low. I think what happened is uh, my box wasn't particularly super high end. Uh, so I would expect m most boxes probably pull a few bucks more, probably another 10 or $20 more. Now, although that being said, keep in mind that there, as of the time that I made this video, there are only five of the cards that were higher than 20 bucks and only one card that I think one card, one or two cards that were 30 bucks and one card that was actually 40 bucks. And then there's 22 cards that are mid range cards to me, which are anywhere from 10 to $20. So, you know, I had potential to pull a little bit more, but I'm not sure quite how much I'd be able to pull. I suppose if I was really lucky, I'd probably be somewhere. I'd probably have another, 100, 150 bucks in here. But I think on average, I think most people would probably pull maybe $175, $200 in value because I think I got kind of low, especially with all these $1 and $2 rares because you can see all these mid-range rares. 
I hardly got anything at all. I mean, I still got definitely some cool stuff for sure, but uh, I definitely got a lot of these lower end rares. But that's okay. It's still pretty cool. It's Dungeons and Dragons, and I thought it was really, really neat. And they definitely, definitely have the flavor. Just about every card in here is something recognizable from Dungeons and Dragons, from either you know the current game system or from Dungeons and Dragons past. There's definitely stuff in there that you will recognize if you played Dungeons and Dragons for any length of time. And I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's about time that they did something cool like this. Um, does it progress modern or standard in any meaningful way? Nah, I don't think so. And I think everybody will agree with me on that. But is it fun? Well, yeah. And, and at the end of the day, I think games should be fun. Well, I hope you had a good time watching this video. And that's it. Okay, so that's my look at Magic the Gathering's new expansion, Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. Overall, I thought the set was pretty cool, and I really appreciate the amount of work they put into it to make it feel like they brought Dungeons and Dragons into Magic the Gathering versus just making a Magic the Gathering set that kind of felt like Dungeons and Dragons. I thought they did a really good job. I mean, you've got like Xanathar, you've got Dritzt, you've got Bruner. There's all sorts of cool stuff in there. You've got Mimics. You've got the cards that have some cool old art on it. And also, too, for Magic enthusiasts, they've got the list cards, like Muscle Sliver is one of them, that they brought in there. You've got all the cool art cards. And I really like, for instance, Evolving Wilds, how not only did they bring Evolving Wilds into the set, but uh, which is just Evolving Wilds. Uh, they're kind of a dime a dozen, really. However, then they did... A separate art for Evolving Wilds that looked like an old school Dungeons and Dragons, basic Dungeons and Dragons module. And I thought that was kind of neat. And it really, uh, I think they really did a lot of good fan service in this set. I thought it was really cool, anyways. I don't think a lot of people are going to be going out and incorporating all these cards into their latest modern decks. But, uh, and I don't think competitively people are going to be using a lot of these cards, and I really don't think people are going to walk around with their Dungeons and Dragons deck ready to play someone else with a Dungeons and Dragons deck, but I don't know. I think that would be kind of neat, because I kind of want to build the deck that's just with those cards from this particular set, just so I got them, because it's kind of cool, and I like Dungeons and Dragons, and I like magic. Uh, there are also a lot of cards outside of this set that really go with it, like Counterspell, for instance. Counterspell is actually a spell actually out of the player's handbook. Uh, Fireball, for instance, Lightning Bolt, Lightning. What else we got? Oh my gosh. Well, of course, they actually had Magic Missile in this set, um, but I'm talking about outside of the set. Uh, they've got all the different elementals, Wall of Fire. There's really some pretty cool stuff outside of Magic if you start looking that really fit right into it. I mean, literally, word for word. Look, it's a water elemental. That's right out of Dungeons and Dragons. Throw it in there. You know, might not be good, but wouldn't it be fun just to play a deck of Magic the Gathering? that's strictly Dungeons and Dragons or Dungeons and Dragons-esque. I don't know, but I thought it was pretty cool. But thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. I hope you uh, found out something new today. And uh, I hope you give Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in Forgotten Realms a try. Well, again, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, telling you to stay safe, play great games, and we'll see you real soon.